Hello, this is Barbara Nicolato, Nick Snacks with Del Bello's Design Team. Today I'm making a five and a half inch square peekaboo card that I've seen made in the smaller A2 size. What I like about it is that you can change the scene upon opening it, or even have a sentiment change when the card opens. A complete list of supplies used are listed below the video. For today's project, I'm going to feature these stamps from Lavinia. The Spanish Moss, which is Lavinia 505. The Oak Leaf Flourish, which is Lavinia 760. Oak Leaves, Lavinia 763. This is one from a set of three. And I'm going to be using the Fairy Rue, Lavinia 515. I will be using Versafine Claire inks in Nocturne and Shady Lane and Elements by Lavinia in Olive. I'll be using some tear tape. This is a quarter of an inch wide. Um, I will have also um, opportunity to, to use Designer Dries Clear Adhesive by Art Glitter and Diamond Stickles. I'll be using Posca pens in green and yellow, clear Wink of Stella, a white gel pen, a Nouveau glitter marker, and it's Lemon Drizzle. I will have my Sharpies on hand. And I'm going to be also using this um, <clears throat> stamping platform along with a sticky mat. I will be using two dies. These both come from a Gina K set called um, Stitched Ovals. The larger one is two and five eighths inches and the smaller one is two and a half inches right across the center. As far as paper goes, I have my cardstock here. And with scrap pieces of cardstock, I cut out two ovals using the larger of the two dies. And I'm going to set those aside. <clears throat> I'm going to need a sheet that's five and a half by seven and a half. And I've scored it at the two inch mark. That will be the front of the card. The middle part of the card will be five and a half by eight and a half inches, and I scored it down at four and a quarter. And this is going to be folded like so. And the very back of the card is five and a half by five and three quarters, and I scored it at five and a half, leaving me a quarter of an inch tab down the right hand side. Now I'm going to start with the front of the card and I'm going to make sure that my score line is towards the left. That's going to be folded behind the front of the card. I'm going to select the smaller of the two dies. After having cut out previously the two larger ovals, I'm not going to need this large one anymore. So I'm going to place this. You could, you could put it in the middle, at the top, at the bottom. I've selected, ooh, let's see, right about here. And I'm going to tape it down and then run it through my die cut machine. Okay, I'm back. And I'm not going to need this piece, so I'll put it aside for another project. The next thing I want to do 
is take the piece that's going to be the middle of my card, which I've scored and burnished. And I'm going to place this inside the front of the card and I can open it up like so. And I want to make sure that it's all centered nicely. Now I'm going to close that inside of the card. And let's see, make sure it looks good. There we go. And I'm going to um, trace out my circle a little because I'm going to die cut the inside part. And I want this to go through both layers. Now, I may have to put it through the die cutting machine a couple of times. I may have to use some paper shims to get it just right. But I'll be back with that shape cut out of the middle card. All right, well, that worked out easy enough for me. And here's the middle part. Okay. So I'm going to put the back to the side for now and the front of the card. And I'm going to work on this middle card here. I'm bringing in my stamping flat platform. And I'm going to actually nudge up this card so it lines up with the left and the bottom. And I'm going to take one of these larger circles that I cut out and I'm going to put it behind here. Let's see. I'm trying to center that. Good. Because at this point, I don't want to see the stitched areas. And I'm going to center my stamp, which is Rue. I'm going to place her right on here. Cheryl McQueen recently did a video tutorial in um, Talk Crafty to Me on our site under Talk Crafty to Me. And she actually placed a stamp so it looked like um, it was coming off the sheet and onto a back sheet. And she used this technique so that you wouldn't get any of those gaps. If I tried to stamp, um, for example, if I tried to stamp her on two different levels, this area in here wouldn't stamp well. So by following this particular technique, we've got that part taken care of. I'm going to ink Rue up with Nocturne. And then I'm going to take some sheets of paper and let's see, I'm just going to put some up here and down here. So, yeah, so I don't dirty too much of my uh, sticky sheet. I like to use this weight that I made from a uh, Yankee candle top. Filled it, I put glue on the inside, hit it with glitter, and then I put some weight in there, closed it off with some cardboard and felt. And this is the pressure that I apply to make sure my stamped image comes out nicely. And there we go. What I'm going to do now, since I have already centered it before, I can take this out. So I'm going to put this card here. Actually, I'm going to put this over it. This is my, um, what the heck is this called? Oh, my sticky mat. And that's going to 
hold that down for me. Okay. And now I'm going to stamp her again. And what I'm interested in here are just certain parts coming out on that top card, the top of the vine, a little bit of her foot, her fairy wings. And there we go. Okay, I'm just going to wipe this off. There go. And then I'm going to replace this little acetate sheet on top to keep it sticky. All right, what I'm going to do now um, on this card is I'll be stamping this Spanish moss and actually I can use the stamping platform rather than these stamping blocks. I'm using Shady Lane. This is why the stamping platform is nice. If you lift it up and you see that part of the stamp didn't ink well on the card, you could just put it right down, do it again, and its placement is guaranteed. I'm going to slip this under here again. And I've inked it up again, and now it's going to come out on the bottom part. There we go. I'm going to move it over and place it there. And then I'm going to put these in place again and make sure this is well butted up against the bottom and the left. And after having inked up my stamp, I'm going to stamp it on top. <clears throat> there we go. So do you see how this is working right now? You have a partial picture. Later on, this will come into play and it'll complete the picture. Okay, so I'm going to uh, carefully remove Rue. And I'm going to use the other stamp in this set to just continue to add uh, 
Let me switch to olive just to continue to add some of this foliage. Back to Shady Lane. Now the inside of the card is green representing springtime. I'm going to embellish this a little bit more um, using some of the leaf stamps. So I'm going to line this up and we'll meet her toe. Her wings line up nicely. There we go. And I'm going to open up my olive and my shady lane. And I'm going to stamp a few leaves here and there. Whoops. As far as um, coloring the wings and things like that, I'm going to save that till the end. And now I'm going to start to work on the front part of the card. I'm going to do the front of the card in a similar fashion like I did the inside part. And now I'm going to ink her up with Nocturne. Because the front of the card represents winter, I'm using black ink. Then upon opening the card, we transition to springtime. So I'm using green ink on the inside of the card. All right, so I've placed these in position and I'm going to stamp them in nocturne. So I'm going to ink up the bottoms. Let's see, we don't need all this inked up, and we don't need all that. There we go. Here comes my sticky mat. And here's my front. Again, it's butted up to the left and to the bottom. I shouldn't have removed Rue. I should have stamped her on both parts of the papers. Again, we'll do her in Nocturne. And I think I've got her lined up nicely there. Good. I have her foot and her wings on the front. And now I've realigned the two stamps. Nocturne again. Now it's time to move on so I can finish with the front of the card. I'm going to be stamping this Spanish moss around. I'm not going to be using the leaves because this is supposed to show a change of seasons. So this will be a season where there aren't that many leaves out there. Now I'm going to take some time to embellish this card. And to begin with, well, I should tell you that 
there were bits of rue where the black ink came out a little light. So I took uh, my Sharpies and I just went over it where the light spots were. And that takes care of that. And then I'm going to color her wings with this uh, gold. Actually, it's not gold. It's lemon drizzle glitter marker. I'm going to top that with stickles, diamond stickles. Diamond stickles seems to throw in like a little holographic effect. There we go. We'll set that to dry. And then I'm going to bring back the inside of the card. I'm going to take my pasta pens and I want to brighten this to make it more of a spring look. Leaves are starting to bud out. Flowers are emerging. And that's what the inside of the card is going to depict. I got a little ink there. And if that bothers you, there you go, it can be covered. This is, happens to be a white Posca pen. Some people like to use gel pens on it and so on. But I think that pretty much gives it a more color like spring. I'm taking uh, the white gel pen now and I'm just gonna go over to show some uh, veins on these larger oak leaves. And I'm just gonna give this a little time to dry and then we're gonna put the card together. Now it's time to assemble the card and then add the finishing touches. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the back that we had set aside. We've scored it and we have this quarter inch tab which we folded in towards the top of the card there. I'm going to put this uh, tear tape, I guess it's called. There we go. On the flap, I'm going to burnish it down and remove it. And I'm going to take this part and I'm going to line up the bottom with this flap here. There we go. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my adhesive glue all around here and then I'm going to take this top and I'm going to affix it to where I glued. Let's start that. Now before I go any further, there's a little bit of paper hanging out here from the center part. So I'm going to go over to my paper cutter and I'm just going to cut this so that it's all nice and even. I'm going to shave off a tiny bit. All right, so I have the card put together and this little piece is going to get tucked away in here. But what I want to do is 
the image that I want to see when the card is closed, which is this one, representing the the just the black and the white. We're going to put that all the way on the bottom like this, all the way to the back. Make sure that I have her lined up nicely so that her foot lines up and the plants and the wings. And I'm going to hold that like so. I'm going to take a piece of tape and put it along the edge here. And there's a reason for that. It's so that when we have the other piece sliding into place, it's going to slide over this. I don't want it to get caught on that piece of cardstock there. So I'm going to um, glue, glue her down. Okay, so this is the view when the card is closed. When we open the card, this little tab that we have folded in is going to slide across and it's going to be carrying this particular oval. So what I want to do, I'm going to put a little tear tape back here. I'm going to put it behind the left side. And I'm going to slide her in without pressing down. I want to slide her in to get her in position. Let's see, I'm going to hold her this way. Make sure I line up her foot and her wings. And now I'm going to push down so that that tear tape sticks to the flat, like so. So again, here's the front of the card. I take this flap from the front, and I'm just going to fold it back. And the back of the card gets pushed up, and this is how the card will work. Push that down. All right, so here she is, and then we open it, and there's the spring version. And I chose to put my own sentiment here in the front. Hang on. And I'm going to take my, um, my white gel pen. There we go. I'll let you in on a little secret when I do my lettering. I just eyeball the placement of the letters and use the ruler as a baseline guide. This way I don't have to draw in and then later erase the guidelines. An idea to change it up a bit would be to add sentiments to the ovals. For example, a happy birthday to be viewed when the card is closed and a birthday sentiment to be viewed when it's opened. To add a little more visual interest to my card, I decided to run a line with my Sharpie along the edges of the card and I did the same on the inside. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I thank you for watching. Please visit us at DelBellosDesigns.com to purchase most of your crafting materials.
Also, if you haven't already done so, please consider joining us on our two Facebook groups listed here. Remember to leave room in your garden for the fairies to dance. Have a beautiful day.